I have a lot of plants, which means I'm breaking the law, even though I am like not even being self-sufficient with my weed yet. Um, but I did it for a reason. It's because I am doing a breeding project. I'm doing a genetics experiment. I'm an amateur geneticist, I guess. I know more about marijuana than anyone. So um, in this video, I'm going to explain what my project is. When I walk up in the club and say, everybody want to know my name. Yeah, here comes the glass roll. Yeah, here comes the glass roll. My entire project is built around trying to hit a plant called Velvet Skies, I guess. But I was also trying to hit a plant called Pancakes. And, um, Pancakes is a plant that came from London Pound Cake, and it seems like London Pound Cake is an important plant that um, Cookies has been using for uh, breeding, and Cookies is a very, very good company uh, for uh, breeding marijuana. Cookies is who, I think, created Girl Scout Cookies, which um, has led to very, very, very powerful strains. Um, I go way back in the day in the marijuana business to when OG Kush was invented. I've claimed that I know the real inventor of OG Kush, I know the guy who's got the Chem 91 clone, and Chem 91 is a clone only plant um, that has like the same genetics only um, that like you can't, like it, it doesn't come from seed because it, it's called Chem 91. It's the seed that was popped in, in 91, 1991. And um, it is a plant that creates OG Kush. It has a specific, specific flavor to it. My theory is that he's using a phenotype of White Widow mixed with OG Kush, and the White Widow is where the cookie flavor comes from, or where the baked good flavor comes from. Um, I know that because I bought the White Widow from, like, from this guy, uh, my, like, the OG Kush guy. Um, he, my, my camera's crooked. No, my camera can't be crooked today. Not during this video. I'm sure you guys are really, in, like, happy that I'm fixing this. All right, so, um, I bought from his dispensary back in the day, and my theory is that um, like someone he knew uh, sabotaged my farm because he realized that I was good at growing. Um, he is a person that when you look on a shelf, you'll see chem and you'll see dog. And I think it's a secret that chem and dog are different plants. They have different genetics. Because everyone thinks it's chem dog, but they taste so similar that they people think they're the same. Um, and so like for him, like. I think that uh, he's, the, he's one of the few people that know that Kim and Dog are different, except for people nowadays, because I came into the marijuana business when everyone was using illegal plants, and like everyone's kind of hiding their identity. And so like what's happened now is that this plant, Girl Scout Cookies, which I think was bred um, like out of his Durban Poison clone also, he has like the craziest Durban Poison, the strongest plant I've ever smoked, or I had ever smoked. 10 years ago was Durban poison. Like it was so strong, like you will never finish that bowl. Like it's so strong, like you're, you're like waking up with bruises and you're like, I didn't know weed could do that. And um, he bred it with Kim 91. And I don't know what kind of, the, what the dog situation is there, um, but there's also a plant called Kim's sister that is in Gorilla Glue. And there's also a plant that I've theorized is another relative called Pure Kush, which my understanding of the situation is that it's a run. Because a girl I dated back in the day, I think that like she got the Pure Kush clone and she didn't like it, especially because of her growing method and also because she was trying to grow for profit and that plant was not profitable enough and she had such bomb weed from like her sour diesel line, from her, um, from her blue cheese line that she didn't want to um, mess with, with the Pure Kush clone and that's why she doesn't have it anymore. I think it's a relative also. No one's ever told me that Pure Kush is a, is a relative of that, but I know who I bought weed from. I know what, who, who has Kim 91, C4 is another clone, Kim 4. It's the number four plant. Um, and this guy grows C4 all the time. C4 might be the most potent. It's more on the sour diesel side. Because of the sour diesel side, of Kim, I think that that is a common relative. And like when we're when we're talking about a breeding project where we're trying to increase stability, um, how do we do that? Well, we need to find like what its ancestor is and breed it. And like it, it's a way of keeping it from turning into hermaphrodite. Because like if I can look into the sour diesel line, which is skunk, um, then I can see something there and I can say, okay, 
here's how I can get this plant to not turn hermaphrodite. Because this whole project, like I'm sure you guys are wondering, how is this an experiment? How, how are you How are you an amateur geneticist? Like how, how do you think that you're a person that um, is doing a real experiment with your marijuana plants? Uh, what I'll tell you is that I have a plant called Gorilla Bubble that's an inbred line of Gorilla Glue with bubble gum that produces the Gorilla Glue number four phenotype. Uh, but the problem is it has a serious problem with hermaphrodites to the point that like I only have one female that's made it. And I have some Gorilla Glue plants also and I have some LAC Kittles plants which um, I, I can look at right here. It's pure kush, hopefully, by a plant called Z Kittles which is um, grape ape by grapefruit with an unknown strain. Um, grape ape is minoperps by an Afghani skunk. Uh, grapefruit is sinning, like in my theory, in my opinion, it's got some sinning 99 in it, and I don't know how he bred that grapefruit, but uh, sinning 99 has shiva skunk, like as kind of the flavor generally, um, but it's like more on the grapefruity side of shiva skunk and like less on like the like absolutely delicious side. Uh, in my opinion, Cindy 99 never tastes as good as grapefruit or as, as, as good as Shiva Skunk, but um, it's probably more potent than Shiva Skunk and it has a better tendency in the way it grows for mass production indoors especially, but generally like it's just like the, gen the compact nature of its growth is good for uh, mass production. Um, so Cindy 99 is a lot of Jack Rare and Shiva Skunk. Uh, but like it's it's definitely like pulling the shiva skunk out of jack rare and i think that haze makes it makes it more potent but i think that like the 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 inbreeding of jack rare through princess probably um it probably decreases stability but i've never seen stability problems in cindy 99 before and so i like what is stability like stability especially is like the tendency here for a plant to uh I think that people think of stability as like uniform genetics, like I breed these plants together, it's always gonna turn out this way. I think of stability as not having hermaphrodites. And I've had a lot of hermaphrodites, um, especially with my plant, um, um, which is Pancake Breath, uh, which is OG Crisp Press version 2.1 by Pancakes. And uh, if you look at Pancakes here, uh, I'll pull it up on my own. Um, it's Kush Mints, which is Animal Mints by Bubba Kush with London Pound Cake. And London Pound Cake, on one side you have OG Kush with Burmese Kush, which I think that Pink Panties is probably slightly un unstable because of that land race, the, 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 the Burmese side of the land race. But at the same time, like when I think of Burmese Kush, I think of it as tasting a lot more like Hindu Kush than a lot of plants, but I think it tastes better, um, but it's extremely potent. One of the strongest plants I ever smoked was Burmese Kush. Um, and it was mixed with an OG Kush. And I think that everyone back in the day used to think OG Kush is, is, is clone only. All the, like, before I was working on, off, the, uh, off the concept that this project is very confusing because it's all from the same clone of OG Kush. And then, like, I started going, okay, this doesn't make sense. There's Lemon Larry, there's all, they're all, there's the South Florida cut. There are all these different cu cuts of OG Kush. How can, they, like, no, it's just a cut. Okay, so you're cutting from the same clone and it's tasting completely different? Like, how is that an invention? It's not. Like, what it is, is it's like breeding of the OG Kush and finding the OG phenotype, which, in my experience, is pretty skunky. But it doesn't taste like skunk. Like, it doesn't taste like a skunk number one land race. Like, when I'm talking about, like, Hindu Kush, and when I'm talking about, like, Bubba Kush, and when I'm talking about, like, Af well, Afghani is like a different kind of land race flavor. Like that's the thing, like land races can have different flavor. Like uh, la Jamaican lamb's bread, it's never gonna taste like lamb, like, like land race to you. It's gonna taste like it's the bomb. Like you're gonna love the way Jamaican lamb's bread tastes if you smoke it. And if you smoke Afghani, you might really enjoy the taste because it tastes a lot like blueberry. Um, and, but like some of them taste really earthy. Like, like Hindu Kush tastes plain, Master Kush tastes plain. Um, like that's how I would describe a lot of these plants is they taste plain. Um, and, but like out of the plainness, some, a, a genetic anom anomaly can be found and then bread. And I think that's what happened with cheese. Is like cheese came out of skunk number one, a genetic anomaly was found in the cheese and it was cloned because people really, really liked that plant. And luckily that was a cloner and that was a person that, um, really found a great plant. 
which is a land race plant that tastes different than other land race plants that are similar. And a lot of the time, like if you want real stability, like you need a land race that's in the same category as yours. So like when I talk about Burmese Kush, like being land, being like um, a different kind of land race, I don't know if it is, because I don't know what Burmese Kush really is. Like I kind of, it makes me go, oh, well that must be some sort of land race, kind of like Hindu Kush. Like, because Hindu Kush is the kind of land race I want like in my breeding, like it's the type of land race that will increase stability. It's from that Pakistan, Afghanistan area. Like I know that I'm in the, the skunk Afghani department. I need to be there, but I can't go too far back in the land race, in my opinion, um, if I'm trying to get potent. Because my theory is that I need to figure out how to hit all these plants that are inbred so much with not OG Kush, it's OG Kush is inbred and it's bred into them and there are different OG Kushes bred into them, and but it's the clones. Like we have so many clones that are that have, like that are related to this plant Kim 91, because Kim 91 is where like OG Kush comes from. Like my understanding is it's not from dog, it's from Kim 91. But I feel like someone could have done it with dog, and not someone and, and said this is OG Kush. But do I think OG? Do I think dog tastes like Kim? I don't think dog has as much flavor as Kim, but it might be because I was buying from a breeder, and when you buy from a breeder, you might not have as much flavor because they're putting more seeds in it, but I don't know. C4, um, Kim number four, that is a plant that I think was probably bred with uh, 501st OG, uh, bred to make 501st OG, which is the different type, type of chem. And so like my whole genetics experiment, which I'm finally getting to, like what is this all about? I'm trying to hit these plants that are super inbred with Chem 91. And I can look at it and I can go, okay, Sunset Sure is Pink Panties, which is Burmese Kush by OG Kush. That OG Kush, it's got a clone only plant, Chem 91. It's probably got a clone only plant no one knows about, the 98 Aloha White Widow clone. And then on the other side, there's Girl Scout cookies. What does Girl Scout cookies have? It has possibly that same turban clone, seriously, or plants from in from the in the F1 Durban category that came from that Durban clone, probably because that Durban clone was a freak. Like if I know the if I know like if I if I'm like if I know the people behind the freak plants, they have a clone of that that that, that Durban poison. Like they're like that, and so. Um, that could be Durban that is inbred. And then on the other side, it's OG Kush, which once again has that Kim 91 clone. So my theory in this whole project is I need stability. And I, when I think about these plants breeding in nature, like how, how, do I, how can I create a land race strain? Well, I have a field full of plants. I just let the males screw the females and that's just how it works. And then like they die naturally, their seeds like pop up and then the males and females screw again. And it's like consecutive over and over and over again with the seasons. These plants naturally breed together, and they have, and the ones that survive have um, resistance to pests. And the ones that survive, um, they have a good location in the field. And the ones that survive, um, they have like certain tendencies for survival. And so, um, they, they, those plants are tested more. But they also have more diverse genetics, right? Because every round, like the males and the females are just going crazy. Um, I have this problem where like I'm like having plant inbreeding going on constantly in my line. Because when I look at that London pound cake, I see it. Like I see that like it's nip OG by Sunset Sherp. So I've got another Chem 91 on that side. So like everything's Chem 91. And so what do I need to do? I need to find Chem 91's relatives. I need to find dog. I need to find pure Kush. I need to find um, Kim's sister, which is in Gorilla Glue. And once I find those plants and I can breed them in, my opinion is I can take this Gorilla Bubble that has a lot of hermaphrodites, breed a male with it, or breed a male Gorilla Bubble plant with the other plants. Next thing you know, when I breed it with LAZ Kittles, I'm not going to have as many hermaphrodites. So that's a real experiment. It's seeing if I can get rid of the hermaphrodites.